Hello, I'm Dr. Timothy Resco from Boston Children's Hospital. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to examine a patient for scoliosis using the Adams Forward Bend Test in a scoliometer. Before starting the exam, obtain a history from the patient or the parents with particular questions about family history of scoliosis, Marfan's, neurofibromatosis, or back pain. Then examine the patient from a posterior position. Start by examining the height of each iliac crest to evaluate for leg length discrepancy. Proceed to move cephalid to view for waist asymmetry. Then ask the patient to bend forward with the palms opposed to reach for his toes. Make sure the patient keeps the knees in full extension as hamstring tightness in this age group will cause the knees to flex and distort the spine examination. An inclinometer can be used to quantitate the torso asymmetry in the chest region at the horizon as the patient bends forward. The cutout of the inclinometer should be centered over the posterior spinal process so that the device rests on both the right and left rib cage. Further flexion at the hips allows assessment of the lower thoracic region. Lumbar asymmetry is difficult to assess unless the patient is rather flexible and can reach his toes. Assess ligamentous laxity for collagen-based diseases associated with scoliosis. The thumb and palm sign is positive for arachnodactyly when the thumb fingernail extends beyond the ulnar border of the closed fist. Additionally, wrist sign is positive when the thumb and small finger overlap when grasping the wrist at the radial styloid. Both of these signs are absent in this patient. Perform a neurologic exam of the lower extremities to include deep tendon reflexes and muscle strength. Examine the patient's skin for cafe au lait marks, which may suggest neurofibromatosis. 